Making music with Ableton Live is actually quite simple once you get the hang of navigating the program itself. We've assembled a bunch of essential key commands or keyboard shortcuts that are going to help make your process more fun. Let's check them out. When you're first looking at Ableton, Tab is going to toggle between the Arrangement view and the Session view. In addition to that, if you're looking at a clip, you can hit Shift Tab, and that will toggle between the clip itself and the devices that are on that track. Now, if you're ever not sure what you're looking at and you're wondering what's going on, question mark toggles that mouse over info text that'll allow you to just mouse over anything and it'll give you some handy info about it. And if you need more info, you can control click anywhere on the program and it's going to give you pertinent key commands and functions that relate to wherever you've clicked. That's really handy. Now, once you are looking at a clip and ready to make some changes, B changes between the two tools in Live the break points or the pencil tool, and then command one through five change your grid resolution. Whether you're in the session view clip, like down here in the lower right, I can see I'm on 16th notes. I can hit command two to go to eighth notes or command two to go to quarter notes. I also can do that same thing over here on the arrangement view. Notice here I'm on four bars. Let's make it two bars. Now, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit using plus or minus. Plus is gonna zoom me in. And notice as I zoom in, my grid resolution gets tighter and tighter. This is called adaptive mode and it's pretty slick. You can zoom way in and have a tight grid, zoom way out and have a broad grid. But if you don't want it to do that, you can just hit command five and that's gonna fix your grid resolution. So now mine is on 16th notes and I can use plus to zoom way in or minus to zoom way out and my grid is stuck on 16th notes. That's really, really helpful. Now there's gonna be times when we want no grid at all. So we're gonna to wanna to hit command four and now we can just freely slide things off the grid. Now, if you're working on the grid and in general you wanna stay on the grid, but there's maybe like one little move you wanna make that's off the grid, you can just hold command and that's gonna allow you to be free of the grid during that quick move. And then when you let go, you're back on the grid. So command will temporarily add or suspend the grid depending on which mode you're in. That works great for automation, even moving MIDI notes around right inside of the clip. If I'm down here and I move my notes around, they're gonna to snap to the grid. But if I hold command, I can put them wherever I want and they're gonna be able to be free from that stepped grid resolution. Ableton Live loves the arrow keys. You're gonna use these arrow keys to navigate and move things around all the time. I always see people stuck to the trackpad and man, is that slow. If I grab a chunk of notes, even a single note or lasso tool around a pile of notes, I can use my arrow keys to move them all around. And I can also hold shift and use my arrows to change the note length or up and down to change octaves. Now, in addition to that, if I hold shift and option and use my arrows, I can increase the amount of notes I have selected or decrease them to grab a smaller chunk of selections. Another essential function for just navigating Ableton and getting around is adding tracks. If I select on a track and hit Command T, it's gonna add an audio track immediately to the right of that. And if I hit Shift Command T, it's gonna add a MIDI track. Option Command T is gonna add return tracks. And then Command Z is gonna undo anything I just did. So notice I'm hitting Command Z and wiping all that out. And I can hit Shift Command Z or Command X on a PC, and that's gonna redo what I just undid. So Command Z and Shift Command Z or Command X are gonna undo and redo anything from your event history. Once you have a bunch of tracks playing and you like what you hear, you can use F1 through F12 to further customize how live behaves. F1 through F8 are your channel mutes. And you can see here I'm muting and unmuting different tracks using F1 through F8. F9 is gonna enable record to arrangement, so I can hit that and quickly overdub anything I'm doing right onto the timeline. And then F10 is gonna stop all clips. So that would be the same as hitting this button. Once I've hit that, nothing is playing. Even on my arrangement view, it's all grayed out. Now, F11 is full screen mode. It's really nice having as much screen real estate as you can handle. And then F12 is gonna to toggle the bottom half of the screen, kind of like, Option Command L. On that note, Option Command L shows and hides the bottom half of the screen. Option Command B shows and hides the browser. Option Command S shows the sends. Option Command R shows the return tracks. 
Option Command O shows the arrangement overview. Here I can even navigate to different parts of the song without even having to look at the arrangement. And then Option Command V would show my video window if I was working in a video environment. So all those Option Command modifier keys are going to help me navigate showing and hiding different parts of the program. That's essential. So let's take a look at the arrangement view really quick. I hit tab to show the arrangement view and you can see now that I'm in automation mode, meaning with these drop down menus, anything I do over here is going to be associated with automation. If I hit the letter A, that's going to toggle edit mode. Edit mode unlocks a ton of amazing newer functions inside of Live, like chopping, stretching, reversing, sliding, really getting into the micro editing of the audio files right on the timeline is going to happen most effectively in edit mode. So that's the letter A that toggles on and off different or the automation mode versus edit mode. And in addition to that, I can also hit the zero key anytime. And whatever I'm selected on is going to be muted. Here I'm selected on tracks and hitting zero to mute them. Here I'm selected on clips to temporarily mute them. And even down in my effects section or my instrument section, I can hit zero to turn on or off entire effect devices. Now let's say I've got an effect on and I like what it's doing, but I want to try a different preset or maybe even reinitialize the default preset. I can click on a device and I can hit the letter Q and that's going to enable what's called hot swap mode. By hitting Q and enter, it reinitializes the default preset, or by hitting Q and using my arrow keys, I can try different presets in the device. Here's the deesser, here's the flattener, and I'm using my arrows and my enter key to hot swap presets into that currently selected device. If I don't like what I did, I can hit Command Z to undo, or I can hit Escape to leave hot swap mode, and now I've committed to that new setting. So all these key commands are gonna help you get around efficiently and effectively inside of Ableton. The less time you can spend wondering what to do and moving your little arrow around with your trackpad, and the more time you can spend actually creating, the better you are. And these key commands are heavily effective in optimizing your workflow. So if you like these techniques and you want to further enhance your music making experience with Ableton Live, hit us up at Slam Academy. Subscribe to this channel. We've got classes online or in person in sound design, mixing and mastering, advanced electronic music production, music theory, and anything in between. So I'm JP at SlamAcademy.com. That's my email address. I'd love to hear from you. And let's start making music together. Thank you.